Hey guys, uh, this is Bobo, our mechanical stick. Uh, so today we're doing a rear sway bar on my GTI, uh, technically again because the first one bent thanks to him driving. Uh, it was probably a production problem, but I'll show you both of them and we'll put it in and show you how that goes. Alright, so here's a comparison of the uh, old sway bar and the new sway bar. Uh, you can see the old sway bar is on the bottom, and this bend past the bushing isn't supposed to be there. Uh, they did it on both sides, so luckily uh, Hotchkiss is a good company. They sent me a new bar, so I get to uh, put that back in. Uh, for the meantime, I had the uh, stock bar, so we're going to swap that out and uh, hopefully go fast tomorrow. Okay, so get to it. Uh, Volkswagen's a little weird about their end links. They have basically a stud over here and you put a triple square in it. Which, Sorry, it's a little low right now. Sorry, it's not a stamp on, by the way. Yeah. Not too long. Yeah, we just need to uh, swap this weight bar. Too bad, Charlie. You can change tires on the road. Charlie, you can use the uh, Volkswagen Widowmaker. I already tried that once. It didn't work out too well. Okay. No, I mean the jack from Volkswagen. Oh. They call them Widowmakers uh, because if you're there on anything but asphalt, they slip out and kill people. Nice. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's fun. All right, so we got one side off. Now, yeah. because my car is kind of hoopty, on the other side, we need to use a. Uh, uh, set of vice grips to grab the outside edge. That's awesome. Just a way of life. Oh, really bright. Uh, I gotta move the jack. Alright, because of the hoopty nature of my car, we have a vice grip on this side holding it, and then uh, the wrench on this side. Oh, let's see. Uh, I can't do this with one hand, but yeah, and that's how you have to do it sometimes. Uh, the, inside triple square thing here is stripped out <laughs> and then you just grip some vice grips on the other side and eventually actually replace things okay, but that? that involves ordering all right so with both ends unhooked uh you can take off the bracket bolts um in this case i swapped mine out for a uh m i think these are m6 or m8 uh uh allen head because these come with trip, uh, triple squares on them, and they are a bitch. So, uh, swap them out. Uh, if you're doing this the first time, just swap it out when you uh, put them back in. If you're doing this again, then I don't know why we're having this conversation. Anyways, <laughs> um, that's pretty simple. Uh, one thing I ran into on this when I was doing it the first time was that the uh, I had one of these bolts break off on me and uh, was stuck in the nut. Uh, so my solution for that was just to knock off the welded nut on the back side with an air hammer and now I just have a regular nut that uh, pinches down in there. There's enough room to get a wrench up in there and everything so it works out pretty good. Um, so nice little trick to have in your back pocket if everything goes wrong which occasionally that does happen with me but uh, I'll finish getting this thing out. All right, so we got the brackets off. Or more or less, Bobo got the brackets off because I got shit in my eye. So, you know, just gonna unweave this thing from here, which you know, super easy, always. No, that way. How does this work?
we can go up high. Yeah, unfortunately, Charlie's got my jack. <laughs> this is where it would come in handy to have the old bubble. That car up. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Not sure if I can get the new one in, but I got the old one out. That's the important part. Maybe. Ugh. You don't need sway bars. Maybe you have sway bars. <laughs> Probably because they broke off it. But yeah, you can kind of see the size difference between the two. Uh, this is also a solid bar versus a tubular. Um, tubular weighs a little bit less. I think the upgrade, the bigger one, weighs less than the old one. So that's kind of cool. But um, which way was that? There's stickers upside down. Uh, yeah, it is. You huh? don't know that? My, it's the same way. Really? Yeah. My other one, the sticker is only on the end. So I'm not sure if it's an old bar or what, or like an older stock or what. Yeah, mine was right in the center and it was upside down. Woo! Good job, Hotchkiss. Oh well, nobody really sees it anyway. All right, we figured it out. Apparently, you have to uh, lift up one of the control arms to give you enough uh, clearance. It makes it super easy. <laughs> and then there. Woo! Put some bolts in it. Oh. Down. Isn't it nice having a lift at your shop? Oh yeah. Probably a hell of a lot better than this. Yeah. Makes yeah. it a lot easier. If I ever own a garage big enough. I know, right? I was hoping this one would be deeper, then I could actually like, you know, put the truck in here and then I just put a lift in, but it didn't work out that way. Oh, having problems? I am. Because I'm trying to hold the flashlight in. With my screwing hand, yeah, we'll call it. Look at that. See, you can use the right hand and done. It's in. Okay. I'm gonna put this one together with my bodge. Bodge. I like British words. <laughs> Probably let this down. Oh, what did that do? Where's caught on a switch? Oh, yeah. It's not quite positioned. Oh, I probably need to look that back up there. Yeah. <laughs> Before we bend it. Yeah, bend it again. Which one were you going in? Uh, no, third one. All right, so the most outward hole oh, is. Oh, an hour? Huh? No, inward. Oh. Sorry, I was just explaining. Gotcha. I'll let you get that. Yeah, the most outward hole is 135% stiffer than stock. Or, you know, the outward hole is 90% stiffer than stock. The middle hole is 135. And the most inward one is 200% uh, uh, stiffer. So, you know, go stiff or go home, right? Uh, oh, uh, watch out. I'll lower this control arm down. Oh, it's caught on it, isn't it? No. No? Okay. Cool. So, yeah, we were running the other one at uh, the middle setting, and it helped a lot, but I think there is more time to be made uh, from the 
stiffest setting. Um, by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier. Uh, this is my kind of autocross car, or one of my autocross cars. Which, might as well just say one of my cars, but it's uh, built for autocross, sort of. Um, so we have the Kony shocks and the uh, Hotchkiss sway bar on it. Um, but uh, we got a race tomorrow. That's what we're uh, or why we're working so late to try to get this done. Um, so uh, that's what we're doing. But yeah, we ran it on the 135 setting last time, and it it was good. But uh, it was good while it lasted before it bent away. <laughs> um, but we're gonna try a little bit more. Uh, uh, Charlie, who you saw earlier. Uh, he has a Rabbit, which is basically the same car, except without the turbocharger, and he's running his uh, full stiff, and uh, seems to be having pretty good results. So that's kind of our yeah, he can pack logic. a wheel higher than the cone. <laughs> well, if you pack a wheel over a cone and you don't technically hit the cone, you can cut corners. Right. Well, at least that's the theory. <laughs> that one's just being a bitch. Yeah, that is. Okay, I think this is Woo! Just like, yeah. Stupid a little enough. bit of an awkward angle. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go drink some coffee. Woo! Coffee. Wild. All right. I'm gonna hold this here, and you can put the nut on the back side. And team one. I'm good for something. Finally. I knew I'd discover it eventually. Holding bolts in the holes. Yep. Uh. Oh. Not going? No. Okay. Right. Anyways, you guys know how to tighten bolts. We know how to tighten bolts. We don't need to show you that. Uh, we'll come back to you when it's done. Alright, so I should have showed you a before and after of this, but this is kind of like the sort of test of how stiff a sway bar is. Uh, so basically you jack it up in the front and see how high you have to come up before the back comes off. Two in or two fingers up here, and then the back and then you just barely lifted off. So just stop. That should be pretty stiff. <laughs> so success. Hopefully, it's fast tomorrow. We'll find out. Hey guys, I forgot to do a real wrap up of the video. So here we are, a couple days or a few days later. Um, I show later a clip from the uh, autocross, uh, like the next autocross following. Uh, the car felt a lot better, uh, definitely more prone to oversteer than understeer. Uh, you really had to throttle it out a little bit more than before, and you could really give it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more turning, or you know, a little bit more uh, steering input. Um, as you can see from the video, I'm really still not the best at uh, driving lines and that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll see towards the end, I kind of lost my uh, lost my groove, but. Either way, I put down some pretty good times. Uh, the car felt a lot better, and that's the important part. That's what you guys really want to know. Uh, also, just so you know, I did beat Charlie. Uh, you haven't seen his car yet, but he has the Rabbit, uh, which is basically the five-cylinder version of the GTI. Uh, so, any day that I beat him, that's a uh, good day. Uh, not really sure if that's just because I have a lot more power than he does or not, but... We're going to say it's my driver skill, uh, but you'll see a bit more of uh, his car and our cars at the autocrosses uh, coming up, um, although there is a bit of bad news. Uh, at the last the last couple of runs at the autocross, I started running into uh, boost issues with the GTI, and then after the uh, last run, it or like after we left the event, uh, the boost just fell off completely. Uh, so, 
thanks to the car for uh, at least getting me through the event, but uh, we're going to have to look into that a little bit. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just going to need a uh, whole new turbocharger. Uh, it's acting like the uh, wastegate, like the internal wastegate failed, um, which is not allowing not allowing it to make any boost. And it is something that happens with them. It's not very not very common with the FSIs, uh, which is the earlier versions of the engine for these. But it it does happen. And of course, if it does happen, it probably is going to happen to me. Uh, so watch for that coming up. Uh, get to put a nice shiny new turbo on it, most likely. Um, and then, like I said, watch for more autocross videos. Uh, we're trying to get out as often as we can and uh, try to share some uh, tips and secrets if we actually have anything that qualifies as that. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying the channel. Uh, like and subscribe and comment and complain about me. I don't care. Uh, I appreciate your support and uh, tune in later. Oh, and uh, go race something. We go. Christopher Crum with a 39.1. Run for him for the day and moves him into position number 10. I gotta hold it. I gotta hold it. They didn't, they didn't say my position, so I have no idea. Uh, it's above 10 then. <laughs> I figured it'd be closer because I got a little bit better packs. 